Good day, everyone. I'm Rich Chester. I'm the Director of Consulting for LPA Software Solutions, and it's my pleasure to present to you today an introduction to Cognos Active Reports. I'll be using Cognos uh, version 10.2.2 for my demonstrations today, and I'll take some time today to talk to you about what an active report is and what the value proposition around active reports is. Uh, I'll also talk about how you distribute active reports. And then we're going to get right into some demonstrations uh, about authoring an active report, where I can talk to you about how it differs from authoring a standard report. And then we'll talk about what's new with the 10.2.2 release, and I'll demonstrate some of that. So most of our time actually will be spent today writing some reports together as opposed to reviewing slides. But from an introductory presentation, we're going to do some slides first. During the presentation, if you have any questions at all, please go ahead and um, send them to me via your chat window. At the end of the demos, if there's some time, I will answer as many of those questions as I can. Uh, but keep in mind that any questions you submit that I don't answer on air today, uh, we will answer after the fact. We'll send you an email back with an answer to your questions. So uh, never fear. If you do enter a question, you will get an answer eventually. It just may not be on air today. So let's start out with what is an active report? What, uh, what is it and how does it differ from a standard report? Well, standard reports are run when you are connected to Cognos. You might be connected through the mobile application or you might be connected as a seated user using a browser to connect to the Cognos connection. Um, biggest difference with an active report is that they run in a disconnected fashion, uh, which makes them distributable, um, which means that you don't have to be on a network to leverage an active report output as opposed to a standard report. So they're a disconnected notion of accessing your Cognos uh, data assets. They're typically coded to be highly interactive. One of the, the things that you can do in an active report that is really very hard to do in a connected report, a standard report running on the server, is things like click in a list on a row and have that row you clicked on filter a chart down below it. That's a very unique kind of interaction that would be achievable with an active report that's hard to achieve um, if you can achieve it at all with a standard report. Active reports are portable and self-contained. The portable side of that is that when you run and schedule and distribute an active report, you're actually distributing a file. Uh, the file is in a format called MIME hypertext. It ends in .mht for MIME hypertext. And contained within that file is um, the, the data to be presented to your user and the instructions to present it, which makes it uh, uh, sort of like a portable BI environment. Um, it's got data, it's got instructions to display that data, it's got instructions on how to interact with the lists and cross tabs and charts and buttons and prompts and so on that are on the screen. But everything happens within this MHT file. Um, details on demand uh, from the point of view of if I built a drill through on an active report in this MHT file and I clicked on it, it can connect to your Cognos server and pull up the details. So you can write drill throughs from an active report that will take you to a connected and interactive report if you want to. Um, you can also embed in an active report both summary and detailed data. So that doesn't have to go to the live Cognos server for details on demand. So you've got kind of two choices there. Uh, it fully leverages Cognos 10, so when you run the Report Studio report to generate the MHT file, it takes into account your security. Uh, first of all, you have to have security in order to even run the report. If you can run the report, if you have data security turned on, when you run the report, it only embeds your data in the resulting MHT file that it will download for you. So fully Cognos security aware. Um, while it's being generated. Now, once it is a file that you can you know, distribute, you can copy onto a thumb drive, you can put into an email. Um, you know, at that point, just like when we distribute PDF and Excel output from Cognos, we have to be conscious of security in terms of access to the data that's living in uh, that file. Um, but it's no different than the security problem we have with a PDF or an Excel in terms of distribution. The thing about a PDF and an Excel is it's static data. The data kind of just sits there on the screen. Um, in an active report, um, I can interact with the data. And I'll show you how when we do our demonstration of, a, of one of the sample active reports that come with your uh, Cognos uh, uh, mobile, as it turns out. The mobile application includes the demo that I'm going to show you in a moment. 
Now, what's the value proposition for using active reports? Why would I use them? Why would I make the investment to create Report Studio reports that are going to generate MHT files? Uh, first of all, it's for a mobile workforce. Consider your mobile workforce. Let's suppose that you are a restaurant chain and you have a bunch of area managers who drive out and visit every restaurant in their area. And what you want to be able to do is arm them with information um, to, uh, while they're on the road in order to make the call on the management of the restaurant um, uh, data driven. So what you could do with an active report would be to generate uh, an MHT file for this area sales manager. So he gets up in the morning before he jumps in his car to go to his first restaurant. He gets on Cognos um, and runs the active report or better yet, it's been scheduled and he opens up his email and the active report is sitting there. From this point on, to use the data in the active report, he doesn't have to be connected to your server. So he can be on the road, he can park in the restaurant parking lot, open up the active report, use a prompt to specify this is the restaurant I'm at and see all of the key indicators for that restaurant to arm him to go in and chat with the restaurant about uh, performance. So a mobile workforce scenario along those lines. I'm disconnected uh, from the internet uh, I, uh, uh, and, and I don't want to necessarily wait for a report to run anyway to gather the data I need before I have my conversation. So I scheduled an active report, sent it to this manager, and now he has the details at his fingertips that he needs to do his job while disconnected uh, as part of your mobile workforce. Uh, another example would be along the lines of external customers or partners. Let's suppose that one of the things that uh, you want to do is you want to express to your customers um, the value that you are providing them um, with a, a, a collection of, of, of dashboards and maybe some details around some indicators that, that will help your customers understand if you're meeting service level agreements and so on. And maybe one of your responsibilities is to give a report to your customers on a, on a routine basis, let's say every month, where you need to give them a performance report. Well, if you do this with an active report, not only can you give them a, a very rich visual experience in terms of the report you deliver, you can also give them an interactive experience and they don't have to sign on to your Cognos connection to get it. So you don't have to have them log into your Cognos, which means you know, maybe you don't have to therefore put Cognos outside your firewall because you can extend Cognos to those customers uh, to uh, uh, via an MHT file. So those are the kinds of value props that an active report uh, presents to your organization. So it's a flexible, portable, self-contained BI environment that you can distribute. So let's talk about distribution. How do I distribu distribute an active report after it's been run? Um, I mentioned a couple of these. Uh, certainly you can attach active report MHT files to emails. And um, when you uh, double click on an MHT file, it will open in an Internet Explorer browser on a regular PC. Um, it will open in Firefox. If you've installed the add-on for Firefox to read MHT files, it's called UNMHT is the add-on. Uh, so it'll open up in those two things from a from a seated user, a PC user point of view. Um, if you are a mobile user in the iOS or Android space, there is a uh, Cognos application you can download from the appropriate store. A uh, free application. When you install it, um, it makes your uh, email system on that mobile device aware that when you open an MHT file, it should open it in the IBM app. And so it'll take that MHT file out of the email and it will run it in the, uh, the mobile application and present it and interact there. Uh, it doesn't open in a browser there, it uses the IBM Cognos app there. If you have mobile users who are connected to your uh, Cognos environment, um, then you can actually schedule these reports and push them to the mobile device so that when I log on with my mobile device, it downloads all the active reports that have been pre-run for me. So you can certainly distribute them within the mobile uh, portion of your Cognos community. Um, but if you're trying to distribute to people who aren't using your login for Cognos, then an email distribution and then just drop the IBM Cognos app on the iOS device or the Android device, it doesn't actually have to connect to a server. It can just be there to open MHT files that have been attached to an email. Uh, certainly because it's just a plain old file, you could drop it on a network share. So if you were going to share these files internally to your organization, uh, putting them out on the, uh, uh, the M drive for uh, uh, all of your users who have access to the M drive to uh, grab would certainly be 
an option. And of course, you um, like any other report in Cognos, you could schedule a report to save its output to the Cognos connection, and you could have people log into the Cognos connection and pick up their active report output. So all of the ways you can distribute a Cognos report um, really do work. The, uh, the notion of uh, the interactivity while you're still distributing a pre-run report is kind of the new thing here that active reports bring to the table. And then the network share thing, well, that's because it's a file, right? Um, oh, before I go on, let me just talk about licensing. So last year, June, uh, or thereabouts, um, a bunch of license changes came down. I'm sure a lot of you are already aware of uh, a bunch of licensing uh, uh, changes, and they moved what, who can do what around in the, uh, the small subset of licenses that are left. Um, it's a much simpler licensing scheme. Uh, there is a license role that was introduced back then in June um, it, that is called analytic user. And that is the, uh, the level of license you must have to create or consume active report content. So you can write report studio reports with this tool and create new active reports. Um, you can also pick up active reports that have been run and interact with them with this level of license. In addition, um, there is a PVU-based license. This is uh, one of those unlimited license types that Cognos has. Uh, that's based on processor value units, essentially that you pay relative to the size of your Cognos server in terms of its cores. And there's an information viewer license that is this unlimited internal and external use license. So if you are going to extend this to your customers and so on, maybe you don't want to buy them an analytic user license. Maybe uh, you have enough information viewers out there that are going to use active reports that this unlimited um, uh, PVU based license makes sense. But I guess you know the, the the boil is down. You must have a license of some sort to be able to consume an active report. And the two types of licenses, the minimum licenses, are the analytic user license uh, for uh, interactive users and information viewer licenses for people who are just going to receive active reports and leverage them, and they're not going to write new ones. Right. So moving on to okay, I, I, I'm interested, Rich. How do I go ahead and start writing these? What's different about how I write these versus how I write uh, a regular old report? Um, you still have to plan out the report just like you do a regular old report. You got to figure out how you're going to lay out your contents. You've got to figure out what the data is, what your calculations are going to be, what prompts you might have. Um, active reports can only be built in Report Studio, so you can't you leverage. Um, uh, Cognos Workspace Advanced, for example, to create an active report. Uh, you have to use full-on Report Studio. Um, you size, style, lay out the content, um, you know, put lists and cross tabs and charts and visualizations and buttons and, and so on on your page. That's all the same. And you lay them out using blocks and tables. That's all the same. The new bit is the interactive behavior. Earlier I described click on a row in a list and have it filter uh, some charts below it. Well, that is an interactive behavior on the report that uh, you must define as part of laying out and defining the report. So the demonstration today is really going to focus on adding interactive behaviors to a regular report, because that's kind of the difference between writing a regular report that would run interactively on the server uh, without uh, um, generating an MHT file, and an active report, which will generate an MHT file, run off the server, and have all the objects on the page potentially interact with each other. You still have to test on uh, just like you would any other thing that you develop and then you have to deploy it. And while the deployment options differ, you know, uh, uh, fundamentally the notion is the same, give people access to the goodness that the report presents. So it's the interactive behavior, that's the difference, that's the key. And that's where my demo will focus when we get to the writing reports part of the demo. Now, um, again, this will be uh, one of my uh, last slides before we get into the demo, and that's how do I add interactive behavior when I show you this, this will make it, um, even more sense than this. After your report is laid out um, and you add your data objects and you add your radio buttons and your checkboxes for your prompt type inner, inner, yeah, inner behavior, I guess, will work, or interactions, you define connections between the controls. So in my example, I have a list connected to a chart. When I click on the list, it's going to present new data in the chart that matches what I clicked on. That's an interactive behavior, and how I implement that communication between the list and the chart is by uh, creating a variable that um, presents the data I clicked on from the list to the chart, so it shows the data that matches the value in that variable. 
fundamentally, that's actually it. That is the that is the key to the to the whole thing, is clicking on controls and having them set variables and then having other controls react to those settings. So let me show you an active report that was already written. This is an active report that comes with your Cognos investment. Um, when you download the mobile, the free mobile app onto iOS or Android, it comes with a bunch of um, sample active reports. And this is one of those samples. You see this is a file living on my desktop. It ends in .mht. I'm going to double click on it. It's going to launch in the internet, uh, the Internet Explorer browser, and um, it's going to load the MHT file into the browser. So that's what it's doing there. And now it's read in the data that's contained in the MHT file and the information about how to display the data in the MHT file. And now it's rendered a dashboard. Um, this dashboard is set up so that when I hover over an object. The object turns yellow. This is kind of a launching pad. If I click on any one of the object here, it'll launch me to a page. Also down here on this side, there are icons. They're rather dark, but if I click along them, you'll see that it moves me to pages. So in this particular active report, on my home page, I could click on this guy and it'll jump me to an area. Um, so if I click on this guy, it jumps me to an area. Or I can jump to areas by using this, this uh, you know, navigation bar on the left. Um, as you uh, probably saw, the, um, there's some interesting visualizations here. These are uh, not standard Cognos charts. This is a, uh, a tree map, and it is uh, one of the new visualizations. The uh, Rave engine is part of the active report. In fact, uh, technically, the Rave engine is embedded in the MHT file. So not only can it display charts and cross tabs and lists, it can display all those extensible visualizations. Um, shameless plug, if you haven't uh, learned yet about visualizations and how they work, go to the LPA website and take a look at our visualizations webinar. Um, an interaction. I'm going to click on the, the 2012 and you see how it jumped me to some details and it pre-selected 2012 in this slider prompt down here. And I can change the slider prompt. I can click here on 2011 and you see how it's changing the data. If I click on a uh, bubble in the bubble chart, you see how it is um, generating a different outcome on the right-hand side. You see my list is being filtered by what I have clicked on, and you see I've got this little mini tree map over here um, that's being uh, specific to the item I clicked on. These are those interactions I was talking about. Um, here I've got a button type uh, filter at the top for product line. Um, so you see I've got a bunch of new controls that I don't have available to me when I write a standard report that I can put on a page. So that's an active report special feature. Um, notice I've got this animation going on. As I click uh, from value to value, the visualization is animated. That's unique to active reports. But this object, these buttons here that I'm clicking on, and this object, this visualization, are connected via a variable. And in this particular case, when I wrote this report, or I didn't write this report, pardon me, when the person at IBM who wrote this sample report wrote it, this control is setting a variable with the, the name of the region I clicked on. And this control is reacting to that variable, um, filtering the data so that it presents the data for the selected region. So this is a, a typical interaction or set of interactions on an active report. Here's a network visualization. Again, that's one of those rave things, and it's also animated. And you see I, when I click on this control, it will change the other controls. And this is all, this is the active report interactions that are so unique to it. And now authoring a report, right, that is the, um, the key. That's the, that's the how do I implement these interactions. So I'm going to close that. Uh, I am going to, before I go into the, the how do you write it demo, I just want to show you a couple more slides, um, specifically because I want to tell you what changed in 10.2.2 for active reports, because uh, there's a couple of things, because uh, uh, some of you may have seen the uh, active reports webinar that I did last year, um, and, and so knew a lot of what I've already told you. So what's new in 10.2.2 for active reports? There's this new preview option, which is a really new concept for Report Studio. And I'll show you that. 
And um, that will allow you not to have to run your active report to see how it's laid out and how the interactions work. It'll actually run within Report Studio. Um, so I'll show you that, but that's a, a bit of a time saver in terms of testing and layout. You can run in either MHT format uh, with a downloaded file, um, but while you're developing uh, uh, and while you're running online, if you are running the active report while you're connected, you can choose to run it in HTML format, and then it'll actually work in virtually any browser. So uh, earlier I mentioned that when you open the MHT file, it'll open in IE, and it'll open in Firefox if you've got the uh, add-in there. Uh, but what if you're a Chrome or a Safari user when you use um, uh, Cognos Connected? Well, for Safari and uh, um, Chrome users, it'll run, uh, Active Reports will run when you're connected to the server in an HTML format, and therefore those browsers will be able to leverage it. Uh, you can't leverage the downloaded versions, but you can leverage the interactive versions when you're connected. So it takes away that portability piece for those two browsers, but at least those two browsers can now leverage an active report output. Um, active reports can now be converted to templates. So standard report authors know that any report you authored, you could do a convert to template, uh, click up in the file menu, and then you'll have a, a, a layout uh, that you can reuse from report to report for standard reports. They've introduced the ability to create an active report uh, and convert it to a template uh, so you can reuse formatting and styles. Um, and then finally, slider uh, orientation can be set to horizontal or vertical. The biggie is this preview option. So I will show you uh, that option as uh, we author a report together. Um, the preview option has two modes, an edit mode and a preview mode. So there's preview view and preview mode. Uh, edit mode is the default mode. When you click the preview button, you go into edit mode. It lets you click on the objects. Uh, lets you see data, which is really awesome. It lets you click on the objects and make property sheet changes and see the updates. So it's formatting changes. So you can see how it's formatted when it's got data, and you can change the format interactively without leaving Report Studio to run it and then close it, come back and tweak, run it again, close it, come back and tweak. Now it all can happen uh, while you're developing uh, in edit mode. When you flip to preview mode, while you can't update, you can test all your interactions right there in the Report Studio uh, workspace. So it's not run it, check it, tweak it, run it, check it, tweak it anymore. It's use edit mode and preview mode in the preview view. And then finally, you can look at it in different screen sizes. So if you're writing one uh, active report and it's going to be used on PCs, it's going to be used on uh, iPads, it's going to be on iPad minis, and it's going to be on uh, iPhone 6s, you're going to want to look at what it's going to look like before you deploy it because you may want to change your layout uh, for uh, to accommodate a smaller screen. Um, if it's displayed on a smaller screen. So you can look at all those different uh, screen sizes through this preview view as well. So it's really kind of a powerful uh, change. Now, without any more further ado, I've been promising all along I'm going to write a report with you uh, that is an active report. Let's go ahead and do it. So you might have seen earlier, I am signed on to uh, my server. This is a Cognos 10.2.2 server, and I have a regular standard report out here and my, uh, my goal today is I'm going to convert this report to an active report with you. So that's the, that's the demo. So I'm going to run this report so you can see what it looks like as a standard report. Um, it's reasonably formatted. It's not super highly formatted, but it, it's got this, um, this red uh, drop shadow thing going on. I've got a, uh, a list here at the top that tells me about sales by product line and gives me a gross profit trend. And I've got uh, two charts below it that give me a uh, graphical representation of revenue and uh, gross profit. Um, and they're all in sync. What I'd like to be able to do, though, is give this to my users and have them be able to click on a row in this list and have these update to match the row I clicked on. So my goal here is to convert this standard report to an active report so that I can implement that interactive behavior. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me go ahead and launch Report Studio and edit this report. And the first thing I'll do when Report Studio comes up is I will convert this report to an active report and save it as a new name. As soon as I convert it to an active report, you will note some differences in the Report Studio interface. So Report Studio is going to launch here momentito.
So one of the things that you'll note that is new in Report Studio um, when you open up even a standard report in 10.2.2 is that you on the Explorer bar, there are a couple of new buttons. So um, those buttons, you've actually been able to get to the functionality those buttons represent up until now, but they put them here because uh, people are tending to use this functionality more and more. And that is to change the view of your report from the design mode to the structure mode and back. So under view, there's always been page design, page structure. They put that functionality here. So when I click on page structure, yeah, you see it, uh, all of the objects on my page in a hierarchical fashion. When I click on page design, which is what most of us are used to when we're authoring reports. So that's been added to the Explorer bar. Reason I bring it up is when I convert this to an active report by going to file, convert to active report, you'll note you get a third button here. So I still have the page design and page structure buttons, but now I have the new active report preview button. Okay. Um, before I forget to, I want to do a file save as and give this report a new name. So I'll just call it active report. That way when I hit save, I won't overwrite my standard report. Now you might have noticed already that you've got these new icons here on the right hand side of my controls and they show up on all, almost every control you add to an active report. Um, and I don't, I'm don't. i sure they have an official name, um, but I, when I teach the active report class that LPA offers, I refer to them as ears. These are the active report ears, and there's two ears. This ear um, launches a create a new connection wizard, and this ear allows me to see and set the interactive behaviors for all the objects. So I can manually set the behaviors, or I can use a wizard to set the behaviors. And you see this chart is embedded in this list, and it's got some ears, and the list has some ears, and then each of these charts here has some ears. Um, over here in the Insertable Objects pane, notice for the active reports, I have two new tabs. So I have my, my standard source, data items, and toolbox tabs, um, but active report controls is a new tab. And so these are all of the controls that are in my report that have the potential to interact with other controls. And then this tab is all of the variables I've defined to implement those interactions. Remember earlier I said that the way that this list is going to interact with this chart or this chart is via a variable. This list will set the variable to the product line I've clicked on, and these guys will react to that variable setting. Now in the demo that I gave you earlier, I showed you a visualization. Um, and this report doesn't include a visualization, so I'm going to go ahead and drop a visualization into this block here, just so that you can see um, how that works in an active report. So I'll go to my toolbox. I will drop a visualization in to that block. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick uh, a packed bubble chart. So I will click on the uh, bubble and I'm going to click on the uh, the packed bubble, this one here, and click OK. <clears throat> now that's going to drop the visualization into that block for me. And uh, it's uh, going to ask me which query uh, I'm going to use or if I want to create a new one. I'm going to use the existing query, the one that the pie chart was based on. And I'll click OK here. And I'm going to select the uh, the bubble and I'm going to change its size so that it's the same size as my previous chart. That way my page layout will look right. Uh, and that means that my height has to be uh, 350. So that'll get my, my uh, report sizing back the way it was. And now instead of a pie chart, I've got a packed bubble, which will let me show you visualizations as part of this demo. Um, so let me populate my visualization here. Uh, this guy is going to... Uh, show revenue uh, by uh, region and year and be filtered by product line from my list. So to do that, I will go to my data items because this is the query associated with the visualization. Let me throw revenue into the measure drop zone. Let me throw um, region and the category, uh, ser series, pardon me. And um, I want to throw year in here, which is not yet in my 
uh, query. So I will go to time here and drop a uh, year in as my category. And then um, because I want to filter on product line, even though I don't want to show product line in the bubble, uh, I have to throw product line in so I can filter this guy on it. So I'll drop it down here in the extra categories, drop some. So let's go ahead and let's just run this report quickly so you can see it with the visualization in it as opposed to the pie charts. It's still a, it's an active report. So at this point, it's not going to present me with a, uh, a standard output. It's actually going to present me with an MHT output. Um, and once it loads in the visualization stuff, uh, there we go. Now, I still haven't made it so that when I click up here, it's going to change these two guys. I just wanted to show you the visualization before we did that. So this is a packed bubble visualization um, that has that, uh, replaced the pie chart uh, for this demonstration. Now, let's add an interaction. Let's, let's go ahead and make this active report active. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, the wizard ear on the list. So the second ear on the list. Again, there's got to be a better name for them, but I've just taken to calling them ears. I'll do the create a new connection wizard. And the source is always going to be the object that I clicked on. So over here on the left-hand side, that's the one that I clicked on. And you see it's defaulted to the first data item in the list. I could pick any data item here. But product line happens to be the one that I want. The target that I want to uh, interact with is going to be my packed bubble chart. So I'll go ahead and click on my packed bubble. Uh, the uh, action that I want to do when I click on the list, I want to set a variable and I want the, the uh, packed bubble to filter the data to match the variable's values. So my behavior is to filter as part of this connection. So the sales list will filter the packed bubble with product line data matching on both sides via the active report variable that I'm going to define down here. So I always prefix my variables with var. If you took a class from ET Learning Report Studio, you know I prefix everything. And I will set a default value so that when this report opens, the uh, camping equipment row will be selected and the uh, packed bubble chart will show data just for camping equipment. So I'll set a, a default value for the variable. I'll click connect and I want to point out a couple of things. You may not be able to see it over the wire, but this first ear, this interactive behavior ear, is green on the top and green on the bottom. It was blank. Green on the top means that this is setting values, and green on the bottom means it is reacting to values. If you can see it down here, the ear on the bubble, there's nothing being set. So the top part of the ear is white. The bottom part of the ear is green because it's reacting to the variable. Um, so if you want to see what's happening, you can click on that first ear and just say that it's setting var product line to the selected product line. And it's reacting. It's selecting the row. Selecting a row in a list means highlight the row in kind of a yellowish color to match that product line that's in the variable. And it's filtering the packed bubble. So this first ear gives you a lot of information. And you can change it. See if you hover over these, you can change it. Um, the ones that are active mean that they are germane to the object you're looking at. The ones that are not active mean it's not germane to the object you're looking at. Um, why don't we run this? Why don't we take a look at that interaction and how it works? Obviously, I've done nothing with my column chart yet, but at least now I can look at an interaction in this converted report. So it'll render the controls. Um, it's uh, When it renders the, the list, you're going to see now when I click on the list, uh, you see how camping equipment is highlighted in that sort of orange um, uh, shade? Uh, that tells me it's the selected row. When I click on golf equipment, uh, did you notice that the bubble changed? You see how the bubble is filtering to the product line that I clicked on? Okay, so that's a, an interaction that would be a very unique to an active report. Certainly in the active report, I could have a drop down list where I picked product line. Uh, just like I could in a standard report, but only in an active report can I have a list act as a prompt. So that is uh, fundamentally the how you build active reports, is you build them by laying out a page, laying out uh, your data, 
uh, and then creating interactions between objects. Now, not all the interactions are obvious. This one I just did, I would classify as obvious. I want my list to filter my visualization. In this case, I almost said pie chart. On the other side, I'd like my list to filter my bar chart, but I have to use a different technique on charts than I do on visualizations. So this is the one that is less obvious, if you'll imagine air quotes around that phrase. So let me show you uh, that. Also note that while I could have an interaction that my bubbles would um, uh, animate when they run, uh, I don't have that animation turned on. So I could, I could certainly um, turn on uh, that animation. But let me go back to my report and let's first go ahead and add the interaction with my chart. So I cannot filter charts. If you click on this very first ear and you bring up the, in, the interactions uh, interface, you'll note that the uh, uh, filter uh, component is not available. So So you see how the container filter is not there. So how in the world am I going to filter this chart with the selected product line? Um, and that's the technique I'm going to show you now. Um, I don't actually filter the chart. In the toolbox for active reports, there are many, many new tools that are specific to active reports. And they're all down here at the bottom. I um, mean, for the most part, they come in pairs. The item and a data version of the item. So deck and data deck. Uh, uh, button bar and data button bar and so on. What I want to do um, is, is present a chart that's filtered or specific, let's say it's specific to the selected product line in the list above. Um, to do that with a chart, what I have to do is I have to create a deck of cards. And I'm going to create a deck of cards, one card per product line. And on each of the cards, I'm going to put the chart specific to the product line that the card is named for. And that's the technique that you use when you are doing uh, uh, active reports and you include uh, charts in them. So I will add a data deck to my block. And I will call this my chart deck. And I'm going to reuse queries, reusing queries um, in active reports, same best practice as it is in a standard report. I will um, select my chart and drop it into the card drop zone of my deck. And so now my chart is living inside of my data deck. My data deck is going to build a card per product line, and it's associated with my Q report query. So I can grab my product line from the Q report and drop it here. And that's how I create a card per product line, is by dropping a data item into the card, uh, the drop zone for the deck. So this will cause, when I run and build the uh, output, a card per product line to be built. Now, I need the chart on each card to match the product line that the card is named for. And you do that by creating a master detail relationship between the chart inside the deck and the deck. So I'll select the chart. I'll go to my property sheet. I'll go to master detail. And I want the product line on the card to match the product line in the chart. So a link on product line is all I need. And now each deck, uh, each card in this deck will match the product line that the card represents. Uh, there are, I think, uh, five product lines, um, something along those lines. And so there'll be five cards in this deck and there'll be a chart on each card that matches the product line. So that is uh, essentially how I do it. Now that I've got the structure for the quote unquote filtering my chart, I can come up here to my list and create a connection be uh, between my list and my deck, not my chart, but my deck. See what I want the list to do when I select a product line is turn over the right card to show the proper chart on that card. So from my list, the product line through this same variable, I'm going to actually reuse the variable because it's both about both of the interactions with the charts and the visualization are about product lines. I'm just going to go ahead to my 
deck and I'm going to select, not filter, select the card that matches the product line. So having done that, I'm done. I have actually built that interaction. Uh, that's all it takes. Um, and now if I were to run, and I'm going to go ahead and run this so it downloads an MHT file, uh, just to show you that I can from here. <clears throat> that will run. And then I'm going to spend a couple seconds showing you this preview mode. Um, and then hopefully I'll have uh, a couple minutes left to answer some questions. So let me go ahead and save this guy. And then I'll open him in the browser so we can see that interaction. All right, here it comes. So, so we knew the visualization worked. Now note that my, uh, my, my chart here is specific to camping equipment. That's because the variable that we created was defaulted to a value of camping equipment. It's highlighted here. This guy is about camping equipment. This guy is about camping equipment. As I move to golf, this guy is about golf. I move to mountaineering. So you see, as far as my user is concerned, where I click, I am filtering these bottom two objects. My visualization, we know that now that's literally true. That's literally the interaction that I coded on my, uh, my chart. And it doesn't matter if it's a bar chart, a pie chart, anything from the chart library in Report Studio. Um, that's actually living on a deck, and I'm just turning over the card that matches the product line here. Okay, So that, in a nutshell, is how you write active reports. It's that kind of thing. There's lots of new active report controls that um, would be uh, um, uh, things to learn, right? You know, But if you already know Act, uh, Report Studio, it'd probably take you a day to learn the active report stuff and get comfortable with a lot of the controls. And then, you know, it's one of those things that they had to learn a lifetime to master uh, lots of techniques. Um, there is a downloadable document called the Active Report Cookbook. Google it, very good book in terms of learning active reports. Let me show you preview mode quickly. I'm gonna click on this preview mode button. And while it, uh, uh, it will go ahead and it will render the preview in my browser. And while it's doing that, let me uh, see what questions there are out here. Um, can you use a dynamic cube to build an active report? If so, is drill down supported? All right, so uh, good, compound question. Um, number one, not only can you use a dynamic cube to build an active report, but you can use any cube. So any data source, relational or dimensional, that you can write a regular Cognos report for, you can use to build a uh, an active report. So the answer there is yes. Dynamic cube, SSAS cube, power cube, DMR. Yes, that all works. The second half of the question is, is drill down supported? No. So an active report is in and of itself a relational object. The, uh, um, the, the upside of that uh, and the downside of that is that it is um, a, a collection of data that lives in uh, uh, an MHT file. That's what makes it relational. The upside is it's portable because the data lives in the MHT file. The downside is it's not a queue in the MHT file, which means that drill up and drill down is a foreign concept to uh, an active report. Now, in that active report cookbook that I just told you about a couple minutes ago, um, there is a section that tells you how to make interactions on a report that look like drill downs. So they're not real drill downs because an active report is not a cube, but they will mimic drill down behavior so your users will think you're drilling down um, and drill up for that matter. Um, but technically speaking, uh, it, there, is no, there is no specific um, drill action that's enabled by using a dimensional source. So here we are, we've gotten into preview mode and we're in um, edit mode. Uh, so if I click on an object, you'll note that I have uh, access to the property sheet, right? And so um, the, uh, the, the thought is I can change properties and immediately see how they'll impact my active report in this preview mode. Um, but if I click up here, I'm not getting interactions, you see. And that's because I am in edit mode of preview. This button says preview, that's not what I am, it's what I will be if I click the button. So when I click the button, it now takes me to preview mode. 
Um, and if I click on an item in preview mode, it will interact. Okay, so um, the notion here is, and I, I honestly can't tell you why it took as long to load into preview mode as it did. Uh, it doesn't usually, so it's just the, the downside of a live demo is that it took that long. Normally, it's an almost immediate uh, conversion over. But the notion is, in edit mode, I can change the property sheets, and I can look at look and feel changes as I go. In preview mode, I can interact. This button doesn't tell me what mode I'm in. This tells me what mode I will switch to if I click it. So I'm in preview mode. So I'm in the preview view, preview mode. If I click on this, I will be in the preview view, edit mode. And this, instead of run the report, look at the output, close it, tweak it, run it again, look at the output, close it, tweak it. Now I can examine how my report will interact and I can also change its look and feel without leaving Report Studio. So that's a 10.2.2 only feature. Active Reports, they have been around uh, since 10.2.1. The uh, 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 preview mode notion that I'm showing you now, that's unique to 10.2.2. Um, the other part that is part of preview mode is up here, where I can say, show me what this would look like on an iPad. And, you know, it's you see, it's, it's actually um, bigger. Uh, the iPad would be bigger. This would actually be smaller than an iPad window. Um, I could show it on a 1280 by 1024 resolution. Um, I could show it on a, uh, uh, a different resolution. I can show it landscape or portrait mode here. So this allows me to see what uh, my active report would look like in various layouts. Um, so I could tweak it if I wanted to. So it looked better in more layouts if I wanted to. So that's this preview button here on the Explorer bar. I mean, that fundamentally is the demonstration I planned for today. I think I have time for one more question. Uh, can you burst active reports? Yes, you can. Um, and almost exactly the way that you would burst a standard report. Um, security uh, applies. You, uh, you would split up your, your active report outputs into outputs that are specific to your recipients. Yes, bursting is 100% supported with active reports. Um, oh, and I think I have the time for one more. Can I put a password on an active report? Um, yes, actually, security of an active report I touched on earlier. Let me expand on it with this question. Um, if I want to put a, an access code on an active report, I can. Under File, there is an active reports properties. And in the active reports properties, one of the things I can provide is an access code. Now, it's not called a password because it is not um, a, uh, a password. It's an access code. And the notion is, uh, the difference is that it's, it's um, a password when you entered it would display stars, right? Because, you know, there would be great lengths taken so no one could look over your shoulder and see the password. Not so with the access code. It actually displays it in clear text when you enter it. Um, it's not an enterprise grade security solution. Um, but it will prevent the casual person from opening the active report and looking at it if they don't have the access code. Uh, users get three tries, um, and then they have to close the active report and open it again to be able to try another three times. Um, that's uh, So there is a way to put a password on your active report, um, but really there's a way to put an access code because a password implies more security than the access code gives you. Um, you note that there, you can set uh, window startup size in here. You can put a title at the top of the window when the, access, uh, the uh, active report opens. Um, this compress thing, um, I don't know of a reason to uncheck it, um, but active report compression to keep that MHT file as small as possible so you can easily distribute it is usually a good thing, but you can turn that off. And here you want to limit how much data gets stuffed into the MHT file. Again, for size more than anything else. So there's a governor here, and then you can uh, set this governor as needed. And these settings are per active report. They're not global settings. So that is that. I am out of time. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, I hope that you learned something. For those of you who did submit questions to the chat window uh, that I haven't answered, I apologize, uh, but I will answer them offline. Uh, and I hope everyone has a terrific day. Thank you very much. Thank you.